Say the PIC is performing some unimportant task, and then an important event occurs, like an alarm sensor has been tripped. The CPU should stop whatever it's been doing, go and service that important event, perhaps by turning on an audible siren, and then after that it can return back to what it was doing. This is called an interrupt. Basically, the alarm sensor interrupted what the PIC was currently doing. And when it goes and jumps to a routine to turn on the alarm bell, that routine is called an interrupt service routine. Or just ISR for short. On the PIC32, there's many sources of interrupt requests. And that's often shortened as IRQ. And examples are changing digital inputs, for instance, the alarm sensor input. That can generate an interrupt. Information arriving on a communication port. Or perhaps a fixed amount of elapsed time has gone by. So any of these events could cause an interrupt. So one common use of interrupts is in feedback control. Let's say that you've got a motor. Your pick is controlling a motor. And a 1,000 times a second, it reads the motor's position and then creates a new control signal to control the position of the motor. Well, every one millisecond, we could have a timer generate an interrupt jump to the interrupt service routine. In the interrupt service routine, we read the position of the motor, calculate the new control, send it to the amplifier, and then exit back to whatever the CPU was doing before. So that's an example of an interrupt service routine. But what if you have two? So for an example, you could have the alarm interrupt service routine as well as the controller interrupt service routine. In that case, you should specify the priority of each of those interrupt service routines. So for example, let's say that the controller has higher priority than the alarm. Then if the controller interrupt service routine is currently executing, and then the alarm says something's happened, well, that alarm is going to have to wait until we finish this controller interrupt service routine. And after that, then we can attend to the alarm. On the other hand, if the alarm is executing its interrupt service routine, and then the controller interrupt service routine interrupt comes in, we stop what we were doing with the alarm, attend to the controller, and then go back to the alarm interrupt service routine after that interrupt service routine ends. So in this way, you could have many interrupt service routines interrupting each other, but it depends on the priority of each of them. Now, the thing that allows us to stop what we're doing, attend to the interrupt, and then go back to what we were doing is something called context save and restore. So the context indicates the CPU register. So for instance, if you're doing calculations, your CPU is storing partial results that it might then assemble and put later into RAM. But before that has happened, it's those CPU registers are carrying some context as well as the current location in the program that you're executing. Now, when you want to interrupt it, you need to save all that information into RAM so that you can use the registers now for the interrupt service routine in the CPU. And then after the interrupt service routine has ended and you want to use the CPU registers again, you take that data that you stored in RAM, put it back into the CPU registers, and then pick up where you left off before. So that's the context save, saving from the CPU registers into RAM, and then restore, taking those registers from RAM and putting them back into the CPU so you can continue where you left off. 